Are you familiar with FBI Special Agents Kyle Serpent? Uh, I'm familiar with the name. Is that yes? I'm familiar with the name. I'm familiar with the name. I'm familiar with the name. Let's bring in Kyle Serafin. He's the FBI whistleblower who helped expose government censorship of our First Amendment rights. Now, we only have this memo because a recently suspended FBI agent called Kyle Serafin brought it to the public. And we're grateful that he did. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us tonight. He's the host of something that strangely is called the Kyle Serafin Show. Yeah. Kyle Serif, I can't thank you enough for speaking out. I knew you guys were out there, and I knew it was just a matter of time, but you got a lot of guts putting your face and your name to this. You're doing a service on behalf of the American people, and uh, from the bottom of my uh, cracked and broken heart sometimes, thank you very much. Take a look behind the curtain with a real whistleblower and American patriot. Prepare to embrace the uncomfortable truth because this program has no time for comforting lies. Here is civil liberties enthusiast, Second Amendment defender, and recovering FBI agent, Kyle Serafin. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the Kyle Serafin Show. Today is Monday, April the 15th, and it's a big Monday. What a crazy weekend, huh? We had stuff going on with FISA. We're going to talk about that. We had stuff going on in the air over Israel. We're going to talk about that. We've got Trump going on trial today. We're going to talk about that. We've got a government that doesn't seem to want to stay within its boundaries. That seems problematic. We're going to get a little bit into that. What is and what is not going on. Some of the people that are lying to us. That's always fun to see. We've got a woke military and a bunch of people, including a bunch of women's, the the feminine left, which has overrun the masculine, which is making all of us less safe. I got a big problem with that. That seems problematic. So today we're going to launch right into it. First, I want to say thanks to sponsors. And since uh, we're talking about things getting crazy in here, I'm sure it's been crazy in other parts of the world more than us, but it certainly is not something we are immune from or to. You should check out forpatriots.com slash Kyle and prepare yourself for God knows what. We know that uh, we know that we are slowly being eroded and we don't have the ability to do the things that we used to do. Basic masculinity is not there. One of the things you do as a man is that you prepare yourself. You got to prepare yourself for uncertainty. Fourpatriots.com slash Kyle. Get yourself some emergency calories. Put away some of these foods. Get some water filtration. Make sure that you are looking down the road and saying, whatever comes my way, I'm responsible for me. No one is coming to save me. Just me. And what does that look like? That looks like making sure that you have emergency calories, that you got some tools, you got the ability to power your devices. If that's what you're going to use for comms, check out fourpatriots.com slash Kyle and get through there. Whether it's 72 hours that you want to prep for, that's a good start. You can keep that in your vehicle. You can do a couple of weeks. You can go up to three months, six months, a full year, and they last for up to 25 years, well packed in America so that you guys have the option of at least looking down the road and not being taken advantage by circumstances. Fourpatriots.com slash Kyle. We got another got another sponsor. We don't normally do a uh, video sponsor, but in light of what happened with this guy, Dexter Reed, we're going to play a video sponsor. This is kind of unusual for us, but you guys know J.G. Wentworth? They're the Cash Now people. I guess they've come out with a new ad, so we're, we're running that for them right now. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth, 877 cash now. Was that real? <laughs> JG Wentworth. What is with this lady in the fainting? I can't get enough of it. Um, all right, let's get us started. It's Monday, so we're going to get started up with a little bit of humor. That's the only way that I know how to do this thing, and we're going to keep pressing on. Let's start with the elephant in the room. We got Donald Trump on trial today. He's starting off the weirdest moment. This is uh, CNN's analytical coverage, always fair and balanced. The CNN saying that this is the first criminal trial. It is a historic and solemn moment for America. Do any of us believe that? Do any of us think that there is a historic and solemn moment going on with the political left? No. No, we do not. We believe that these people are basically having non-sexual orgasms over this stuff. They are falling apart with their excitement. 
in what is going on, right? They just can barely contain themselves. And Stephen Collinson over at CNN is is no um, is no different than the rest here. It says a the United States will cross a historic threshold on Monday today, for the first time when a former president goes on a criminal trial, laced with fateful significance for Donald Trump, because he could be back in the Oval Office next year. That's the real part that they are scared of, isn't it? He's the presumptive GOP nominee. He's going to walk in to court to start jury selection. Uh, we've got Mark Naughton 9 or Mark Naughton out on the street in New York. We'll try to cover some of this a little bit later if things get spicy out there. So he's out there in the press corps walking around. But I want you guys to know that they just can't get enough of this. And what is this trial about? This is the so-called hush money trial, right? This is the trial that is going to be about whether money was improperly funneled to quiet down a porn star actress before the 2016 election. Now, let's just take a small moment to digest the fact that we're talking about something that happened prior to his previous presidency. Yes, between the time that this alleged crime happened and now, the man became president of the United States of America and it didn't seem to be part of anything that was going on. It didn't seem to affect his presidency, did it? I mean, what, what on earth are we talking about here? Hush money payments are not illegal, they stated. The problem is, is whether or not there was a bookkeeping error between the way that his uh, his books were kept and the way that they paid off this person. By the way, famous people are regularly doing things like this, especially people who have a lot of money. It's far easier. It's a political calculus, and it's also a financial calculus to decide whether or not paying somebody off is cheaper than the lawsuit that would uh, that it would take to get rid of them. And then the other piece of it that is so important is that... Um, they, they can't be made whole oftentimes because the people who are suing, the people who don't have the money that are doing the suing or that are out there bringing the, the sort of uh, allegations that are looking for cash, that J.G. Wentworth settlement, those people, it may be actually cheaper to just give them the money than it is because you're never going to get the legal fees out of them. You're not going to be able to win in a civil court and take them back for anything because they have none of it. So you're going to end up paying a bunch of money. Look, this is sort of the situation with the uh, with the FBI for me. We, we looked at it and we were like, okay, this is evil, what they've done and all the things that they've come after us. We know that they were in the wrong. We know that they probably actually violated federal employment law on multiple occasions. And yet, when I talked to an attorney, they said, look, it's going to cost you one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 to prove it. The federal government has unlimited pockets. And at the end of the day, we're not guaranteed anything. And then you're not going to be made whole because you're going to basically get about one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 out of them for the whole thing. So all of us kind of look at this and go, there's this calculus that gets done all the time. Just because it would be just for things to be squared away doesn't mean that it's going to actually make a difference or that you're going to do the thing that that causes justice. And, and as several of you are mentioning in the chat already, you know, statute of limitations be damned. They decided to bring this. Why? Because we're doing political theater right now. We are living in a time of unserious people doing unserious things that are basically attempting to to crush financially, but also to smear in the public sphere, a man who's running for president because we are not living in a time when anything makes sense. Our government is stacked against us and they are using state and they are using federal all against a guy like Donald Trump in order to get rid of the political opposition because the left is running the country so poorly. They're doing such a terrible job at it. They are having such a struggle that they've got to smear this guy every possible way, which we all know, all right? Um, all that being said, I think the things that are more important than what Donald Trump has going on with him, which is the distraction that is being put in front of us, is what was also released. And I want to stab right into this thing right away. If you guys saw the thumbnail, the thumbnail has a couple of pictures of people that are responding to crises outside of Abbey Gate. Looks like this. Why are we talking about that? Well, first of all, we could also mention just very simply that the Biden administration has been catastrophic on foreign policy. But more importantly, they decided that on April 15th, this morning, they basically, the DOD has released that they have identified who the suicide bomber was from 2021, from the disastrous withdrawal of the United States forces in the summer, the end of the summer of 2021. So two and a half, almost three years later, they suddenly got this. And it's just on the eve of the day when Donald Trump starts trial. The sleight of hand that always happens, I can't tell you that it's intentional. I really can't. I don't know that it's intentional, but damn it, it sure seems like it, doesn't it? It sure seems like there is an intentional decision to release important news that will go directly in the face of the narrative, and they do it right when something else is distracting us. 
It's very strange. I want to read this story here. This is coming from ABC News. This was buried, by the way, underneath the uh, the coverage of Donald Trump. As you would expect, U.S. identifies ISIS-K suicide bomber kill, who killed American troops and Afghans in chaotic Afghanistan withdrawal. Was it just chaotic or was it completely bungled by the Biden administration's decisions, which was essentially we're getting out of war so that we can start some more wars? And a significant revelation. Is it significant? That's the other thing. They just let off. It is a significant revelation. The U.S. military is for the first time publicly named the suicide bomber behind the catastrophic attack in Kabul's um, Zarqawi airport during the chaotic final days of the American withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021. The identification was part of the findings from a supplemental review ordered by U.S. CENTCOM, Central Command, to build on the military's initial investigation by taking into account information and claims that have served in the sense. Well, essentially those claims were is that there was a Marine scout sniper platoon that believed that they could have taken out the suicide bomber that they had said man in their crosshairs and they would have been able to prevent that particular attack and saved lives. That is the argument that was made. In a recent briefing with reporters about the review, U.S. officials identified this man, whose name was Adula Raham Alagari as the, tour, the terrorist who was responsible for killing the 13 American service members and about 170 Afghans on August 26, when he detonated a suicide vest laden with 20 pounds of military-grade explosives. I wonder where he got those. And a blast that sent uh, five millimeter ball bearings ripping through a densely cr- uh, packed airport crowd trying to get through the airport's Abbey Gate. He was a member of the Islamic State, also known as ISIS-K, in this little faction of it. Okay, so what, what are we all about? Well, this is the fun part. At one point, he was detained by coalition forces and held in custody. Ah, but Aligari was one of the many prisoners released by the Taliban as the fighters swept to take control of the Afghan security forces, mostly without a fight in the days before the bombing. You know why they were able to do that? They were able to do that because the Biden administration pulled all of the American forces and didn't do the thing that anybody would do, which is hold ground and make sure that you evacuate all of your your forces and then your final security element is the last one on the plane and then you leave. They didn't do that. They gave up strategic strongholds. They allowed a bunch of ISIS and Taliban fighters out of custody. And this guy was therefore free to do what was going on. So they don't really talk about that in the article. Uh, ISIS-K took credit for the carnage. We know about that. U.S. intelligence compared photos of the alleged bomber by ISIS-K and photos of Aligari taken during his time in custody using facial analytical software to determine that it was in fact the same person. This is the part that I think is so interesting. Over the last two years following the bombing, multiple intelligence agencies have assessed that the identity of the bomber was Aligari. And then the last little piece here is that they wanted to to know that they had multiple bombers that were available. He wasn't the only person who could have done this particular attack. And this supports the conclusion that the attack at Abbey Gate was not preventable at the tactical level. Not preventable at the tactical level. You see, it was just fate. It was fate and inevitable that there was going to be a guy with a suicide vest that was going to send five millimeter ball bearings through people in that crowd. It just, it was going to happen. God willed it. Is that what the left believes? Is that what we're going to have? No. So the, the key word here is not preventable at the tactical level. The tactical level are the people on the ground, the squad, the platoon of scout snipers from the Marine Corps that were laying there holding people in their crosshairs. That's the tactical level. And maybe that is the case. Maybe by the time we got to the point where they were already considering a suicide attack, then they could have gotten anybody else involved. Very real possibility. But that's not the the level that this was the failure at. This was a strategic failure. When we talk about intelligence, when we talk about operational type things, tactical are the people on the ground, the boots on the ground that are engaging in the tactical operation. Strategic is the overall, well, like the overarching view of the battle space. And when you pull people out of security elements all around a country and give up all kinds of ground for the enemy to maneuver and to be able to set up and recruit people and then say, look, we've got them right where we want them. They're in one civilian uncontrolled airport in the middle of an incredibly densely populated city. We can send people in from any angle. Yeah, tactically, they may not have been able to prevent that at that point. Strategically, this was an abject failure just because this entire administration is an abject failure. They continue to leave open room for our enemies on the geopolitical scale to come after us. That doesn't matter whether it's economic like the Chinese are or whether it's strategic and it's militaristic like what we just saw happen in Israel over the weekend. There are tons and tons of ways that our enemies are getting lots of latitude. And it's because the Biden administration is fundamentally unserious. They're not serious people. They've 
managed to do some seriously dangerous things for this country in the last four years. I can't think of anything that has undermined us more than what is going on with this administration. They just keep leaving space for the bad guys to do what they want. It's it's borderline unbelievable. It feels concentrated. You can't just assume that this man is bumbling. So we saw that FISA was essentially passed without any sort of incident. We have one last take on this. We're going to cover that in just one second here. I want to get into some of the strategic failures, not the tactical level failures. Tactical failure is not everybody voted in favor of uh, a constitutional requirement, which is to get a warrant for FISA 702 when they want to explore Americans. That's a that's a tactical failure. The strategic failure is that they are pushing this garbage in the first place. And it doesn't start or end with this particular vote. It goes all the way back before Trump's presidency. I'm going to present you some evidence that evidence, okay? We all believe that Donald Trump did not control the FBI when he was the president, at least the, those of us who were there. It wasn't Donald Trump's FBI. It wasn't Donald Trump's DOJ. It was the DOJ's DOJ. That's what a deep state is. We're going to talk a little bit about all those things, and I want to get deeper into that sort of thing, including the actual evidence of it. The evidence of it is where it's actually relevant. We have to actually have data points that we can point to and say, do you see? This was a setup. This is where it went wrong, and we're going to give you that. Uh, Before we do that, let's say thanks to my friends over at Patriot Coolers. You guys can go to patriotcoolers.com and get your own. I have not checked the configurator today to see if they were able to get it up, but we did, in fact, crash the website as they were trying to do that. Um, If you want, you can always upload your own images, which we have available in certain places. If you guys want your own sort of like um, scanned on suspendables badge, but we are getting them set up so they can actually etch in. If you guys want to go to patriotcoolers.com, use the promo code Kyle. That'll save you 10%. Promo code Kyle will save you 10% at checkout. Patriotcoolers.com. They have been in the fight with us and sponsoring this program since February of last year. I've taken my Patriot Coolers to no less than 20 states. Probably more than that. I think it's probably up to 30, but I definitely had about 20 of them while I was actively working for the FBI and I started using their products in 2017. I'm a big fan of them and I will 100% stand behind that their stuff lasts because I've still got my original OG Patriot cooler that I bought in October of 2017 and I used to carry it with me all the time. I still carry all the other ones with me every time I go. So make sure you guys are checking out patriotcoolers.com. Promo code Kyle, K-Y-L-E, save 10% and 50 bucks or more and you'll get free shipping. All right. So where are we at here? We're going to keep moving forward here. Uh, let's see. I've got a couple of different things. I want you to know that despite all of the uh, the failures of this administration, at least they are doing a good job with messaging, right? They're staying on message. I got a little video from uh, from a, an interview that Joe Biden did with Scott Pelley. I think you guys can really appreciate this. He's giving the sternest and strongest warning to perennial and longtime American foe, Iran. He's telling him exactly how he feels about their movements and aggressions in the Middle East. And I think you guys can appreciate this. This is how you talk to bad guys. I wonder what is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't, 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 don't. Don't come across the border. Don't escalate this war. That's right. You ever notice that they always um, want to fill in the blanks for Joe because he just, he gets vapor locked on being able to speak? Don't don't come across the border. Don't uh, escalate this situation. Don't, uh, can, uh, Mr. President, uh, don't, don't, don't doesn't sound very good. Can I give you a little bit more to that? Can I fluff up your speech to make it a little bit stronger? Um, obviously, the press conference, he had exactly the same sort of take. They asked him about these uh, these the, the strike that Israel did in Damascus and, and, you know, what he thought the Iranian response would be. And so he had the same. They're staying on point. They stay on message. You guys ready for some more? Don't. Here's Joe Biden letting the Iranians know we mean business. Yeah. Mr. President, what Mr. is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Or else our American don't. personnel will ask us at risk, Mr. Mr. President? Mr. Mr. President, are our, our American troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. What would trigger a direct U.S. response, sir? 
out the door. Don't stick around and answer questions. They're too hard for you. Joe Biden can't handle even the uh, the semblance of a follow-up on this. This is usually how it works. Usually what happens is you ask a question, they give their canned response, and then you try to prob them. And you say, hey, can we get a little bit more out of that? Uh, sir, would you care to articulate a little further on what that means? No, he does not want to do that. And predictably and shockingly, I suppose, for the people on the political left, pretty obvious to those of us sitting on the outside, This is what it looks like when you give don't, don't, don't. When you say don't, don't, don't to a non-toddler, even my three-year-old, by the way, is not interested in the don't, don't, don't. Like males, it turns out, might be a little bit more um, willing to push back. Maybe maybe female, like my girls would used used to listen when you would say don't. My boys are always like, well, maybe I should just take my fork and shove it right in the light socket. Like boys do weird things. It turns out that countries run by men that have a masculine ethos tend to do this. This is the result of Joe Biden saying, don't, don't, don't. You get that uh, sort of sense of the dog sitting at the table where everything's on fire and they're going like, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. It's all going to be fine. Um, luckily, I suppose there, there's this sort of puff piece that was written on, I can't remember if it was uh, ABC or if it was written on CNN, but essentially it said that the Iranians sent in four to 500 drone, you know, suicide drone bombers. These are these, uh, sacrificial drones that they build and they fly them in and then they are supposed to blow up. And so they were designed for maximum sort of effect and visual, but minimum impact on civilian casualties. We actually had more people killed in Chicago and shootings than there were in Israel over all this, but still... What it shows you is a fundamentally unserious group of people that are more than happy to sacrifice American security for, I don't know, posturing. You wonder why that is. And and I guess I guess it's it must be because our military is stacked with people like this. I want to I want to make this point to you that when you seed the ground in our military that men are not interested in doing masculine things and stepping into the fray, when you let this person become a commander that runs the nuclear program, then we're going to, we're gonna have a a bad time on the global stage. We're going to face danger. This does not make us safer. Deciding whether or not someone's pronouns are respected is not helpful, but you guys have seen this. This is from Heritage Foundation, a little video. I'm not even sure that this is legal under the UCMJ to make proclamations in uniform that seem to represent an official military position as a three-star general. I don't think you can make this statement that we now are um, advocating against state laws. We're supposed to have civilian control of the military, not million con- military deciding whether or not they're interested in how states work. But this is a this is a... Three-star general, a lieutenant general telling you that when determining who makes the best, who who is the best person for command, she considers whether or not that person can fully express themselves in the state that they would do command in. Like, just get ready to kind of blink your eyes like you got hit in the face. Here we go. Since January of this year, more than 400 anti-LGBTQ plus laws have been introduced at the state level. That number is rising and demonstrates a trend that could be dangerous for service members, their families, and the readiness of the force as a whole. When I look at potential candidates, say for squadron command, I strive to match the right person to the right job. I consider their job performance and relevant experience first. However, I also look at their personal circumstances and their family is also an important factor. It's a good match for a job does not feel safe being themselves and performing at their highest potential at a given location, or if their family could be denied critical health care due to the laws in that state. I am compelled to consider a different candidate and perhaps less qualified. Those barriers are a threat to our readiness, and they have a direct correlation to the resiliency and well-being of our most important operational advantage, our people. Yikes. Really? If I think that that person may have to serve in a state where they're not going to feel safe about who they are and expressing themselves, then I choose to get a less appropriate commander. That's what she just said. I assume it goes the opposite way, too, that if there is a place where we might be able to plug somebody in because they would have a a, a favored uh, status, that they're pro-gay or pro-LGBTQ, 
then we can put that person there. Even if they're not the best choice, it would be the best choice for them. Is that the military that anybody signed up for? This is a Heritage Foundation, obviously calling out something that is incredibly dangerous and and uh, this sort of attitude that exists with these people. Yeah, as Mitch's clock just said in the chat, we're so screwed, right? Look at this. This is Lieutenant General Deanna M. Burt. And you think, okay, she's a three-star. What does she handle? She is the Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Operations Cyber and Nuclear at the Pentagon. She's the Chief of Operations responsible for Operations Sustainment Cyber and Nuclear Operations for the U.S. Space Force. Yeah, that's a serious position, it turns out. That turns out that nuclear, cyber, and sustainment and operations, those are all really important. Can we cede that territory to a crazy person that is holding on to this ideology? I just showed you what it looks like when you just say, don't, don't, don't. We're being scolded like kids, like children. And then you have this fundamentally unserious way of operating. Um, it's, it's sort of terrifying. And it's against all of our values. It's against all the values in America. I guess sort of is not even right. It just is terrifying. I'll, I want to throw this over at my sponsor's uh, Catholic vote. I want to kind of encourage you guys to make sure that you are supporting them and getting good news from them as well. You can go to catholicvote.org. These people are in the fight for faith, family, and freedom. Three things that are basically the opposite of what that lieutenant general was saying. Faith, that there is a truth that is outside of human understanding, right? Family, which is to say that there is a sort of natural order of things, men and women and children in that sort of order, all under God. And that's what our country is supposed to be beholden to. And then freedoms, which is kind of like maybe we shouldn't let your freedoms infringe on my freedom because you have some weird ideas. That's not freedom. That's tyranny. That's the tyranny of the majority, the 50% plus one. You guys can follow Catholic Vote at catholicvote.org. Again, catholicvote.org slash loop will get you to the loop, or you can go to their main page and you can sign up for the best email you'll get. There's a really good piece in there about Bill Maher talking about abortion. I'll probably play that another day. I downloaded the clip and decided it didn't fit today's. However, when the left is now admitting that abortion is in fact murder of babies, they want you to be okay with it. They just, that's a, that's a hot take and it's worth reading and watching. Follow these guys and at Catholic Vote on social media. I'm doing a lot of, of watching what their social media is about and they're getting better and better about it. They're putting a bunch of time into it to give you curated information that's of value. So check out catholicvote.org, 100% behind that. Now, we're not treating the gays and the trannies correctly. We're not treating them nicely. We're not being, uh, that's not what I signed up to serve in the military about. I mean, all of you that are veterans, think about this. Did any of you ever consider when you signed on the dotted line, you raised your hand at a MEP station, you got shipped off to a basic training. And I'm mostly here talking about my enlisted friends. I understand that the officers are out there too. But when I was in the when I was in the FBI, I was always kind of in a minority. They were all officers. And I was like, I don't know what that's about. No, I was at the I was on the, you know, the eat garbage line. I was on the one where where a child, a 21-year-old child would come in and tell me what to do when I was a grown man. That's okay. That's what you sign up for. In theory, they're putting officers over you that actually understand what the constitution is about. That's not that turns out that may not be the case anymore. And we're not being nice to these these trans soldiers and airmen and marines. And sailors, we're not being nice enough to them. This is Vice Magazine covering down on it. I, I want to show you sort of the reason why don't, don't, don't doesn't work. If don't, don't, don't happens and you have a bunch of killers standing behind you, maybe it does, it turns out. But this is what the, we're exporting to the world for them to see. This is the face of American military to those who are paying attention. And they're thinking, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, we're going to do, do, do everything we want. A lot of men that I work with who are just kind of like, uncomfortable at first. That was kind of the general error. You could feel that? I could feel like they just kind of like look down like. Do you think the military is doing enough for trans soldiers? No. Outside of the military, we are doing everything we can to try and get rid of all the barriers and gatekeeping that has occurred in trans health. And I feel like in the military, it's we still have those same barriers requiring a brigade commander to approve my medical treatment plan, requiring a medical treatment plan that has to, I mean, in all reality, that's quite a violation of some medical privacy. Whoa, right? That was Jessica. That was a, uh, a Sergeant First Class in the Army. And Jessica, who was on what looks like to be some sort of female hormone treatments, we assume, 
looks infinitely more masculine than the vice reporter who is asking the beta questions there. Are we not doing enough for the trans soldiers? How many trans soldiers are there? Can we get a, a head count on this? Are these the people that are supposed to be defending this country? We're going to end up having a bunch of dudes in my age bracket over their 40s. They're going to have to go back in. They've already actually offered volunteers for people who have come out of retirement. Now, you can retire at a very young age from the military, right? You can do 20. You can retire with 20 years and, and get your retirement. And they may need to reactivate you. And like, I'll take a fighting force of men between 40 and 50 that know how to swing a hammer, that know how to go and mow their own lawn. It's so bizarre. But that's how you end up with this stuff. This is how you end up with this answer, which is fine, actually, as far as the answer. The reason may not be fine. The answer is the United States will not participate in reprisal strikes against Iran, senior administration officials say. This is coming from CBS News. They said that in the aftermath of the unprecedented airstrikes by Iran against Israel, there's a hyperlink there, by the way, if you want to go watch uh, Israel doing what Israel has to do to defend itself, President Biden told the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu the U.S. will not participate and reprisal strikes on Iran. Well, why was that? Because the, the political left hates Joe Biden's involvement and protection of, of Israel. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of like, eh, not my country. I'm America only. I think I'm, like, we're going to slowly do this. We, we've gone from um, no one for speaker, which is still the right answer based on what our speaker has been doing, the epic failure of, of Mike Johnson. And the second thing is, is that I'm, I'm America only until proven otherwise. No money spent anywhere else. I don't care. If it's not America's primary concern for America on its own right, then I don't want it. Israel reported only minor damage to a military base with more than 300 missiles and drones that were fired from Iran uh, toward Israel on Saturday night. We had this sort of uh, this moment where we thought, OK, is World War Three kicking off? Guess not. IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari noticed not a trans a trans person or a woke lady said late. You know, why is that? Because they face war on a regular basis. Uh, briefing said they intercepted 99% of the approximately 350 suicide drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and rockets launched from Iran, Iraq, Yemen, and Hezbollah in Lebanon. That's a pretty concerted effort in general. America used to just like, like Israel, just if nothing else, I know there's all these other sort of conspiracies out there, but they're the underdog. They're the only one holding their line. They beat six or five different participants in a five-day war because they launched the first strike because their existence is constantly under threat. Five ballistic missiles got through the Israeli defenses and U.S. air defenses. That's the part that's interesting, right? Why is that not the main topic here for CBS? And struck two Israeli struck in Israeli territory, two U.S. officials told CBS News. Four of them landed in what U.S. officials said was Iran's primary target. An air base where Israeli F-35s are based. One missile hit a runway. Another hit an empty hangar. Another hit a hangar that was no longer in use. That's the right answer. You just don't tell them what you've got lost. A fifth appeared to be aimed at a radar site in northern Israel, and that also missed the target, but it landed. And there's all kinds of crazy footage. You guys can go find more of it. Do we have that kind of capability? Yeah, you're asking it there. No wimps, just ask it in the chat. Do we have an Iron Dome? How come we're not spending money on that? Why are we throwing it to everybody else? Why is the United States responsible for paying for trans surgeries and uh, helping the butt injections of these people that are confused about what to do with their genitals? In the meantime, like, are we spending the money that we keep talking about being valuable and necessary? Are we spending it on uh, making sure that if somebody were to try to attack us or move some, some placements off our shores that we're going to be able to handle it? I don't think so. I don't see any evidence of that because we have fundamentally unserious people. Now, luckily, uh, we've got this going on, too. This is another little instance of it. At least we're affirming these people, right? There's all kinds of videos of this. I cannot believe that these people are allowed to show up wearing their uniform and then doing this dog shit. But here it is. These are one soldier, one sailor letting us know what the real value is. Like I said, this is what we're projecting out into the world, whether it's true or not. America only is still the is, is the right answer, I think. We'll start making that trend. Here we go. I was patient, yeah. Oh, I was patient. Hey, oh. Now I can scream that we made it. She was like, oh my God, I could never wear that. And I was like, let me show you how to. Abracadabra, these bitches know I got answers the way I post. Yeah, if you're not watching on our Rumble channel, what you missed was uh, Joe, and I don't know what you call a Swabby, Swabby Joe. Two different enlisted soldier and uh, sailor flipping their hair. And as they do, they pop up in this drag with like prosthetic breasts and all kinds of other craziness. Disgusting, right? Like that's not what the uniform is about. Can you imagine that the, like the young men that went to war in every generation are looking at this going like, what in the hell are you guys doing with my colors? 
absolutely bizarre. Luckily, the White House has answered in a strong fashion. In addition to saying that they will not retaliate, they also went ahead and punched this out. So this is good to know. Um, this is, I think, I think this is Kareem Jean Pierre's. What do we call her? Sideshow Bob. This is her official statement, uh, responding to what's going on in the world and the strategic failures of the Biden administration coming at you. Okay. All right. All right, so uh, is that what we're doing? Is that what we got coming at us? I'm not trying to depress you guys, but it is depressing to know that this is what's going on out there. What a weird time to be alive. What a sad thing to see. We keep doing it. We keep just projecting weakness. And so, of course, we're going to get unserious people. We have unserious people in Congress, and they're doing unserious things on the domestic front as well. They're moving FISA. I think all of this stuff trumps and takes over for the Trump trial that's happening about hush money payments. Who cares? Not me. What I care about is this craziness. We should be really concerned that we have absolute abject morons voting on things that violate our Constitution, which gives authorities that they do not possess to federal agencies that should not be able to do them. We're going to talk a little more about FISA in just one second here. Let's just get a take from, uh, let's say, the voice of the some of the dumbest in Congress. Uh, Dan Bongino's staff and, and Jim Verity was running, I showed you the other day, I think Sheila Jackson Lee should have taken it from AOC, but they gave AOC the dumbest member of Congress. Um, I suppose that's a coveted title, considering what Jasmine Crockett from the Dallas area and Sheila Jackson Lee are trying to put out in the world. This interview, even just like that she said these things, are shockingly retarded. This is absolutely insane. She also makes it just a, a half-ass sort of uh, allegation that the Republicans are controlled by Russia. Is that the same? Um, is that the same Republicans that keep sending all of our money over to Ukraine? Because uh, they all seem completely comfortable doing this thing. Let's just throw this kid lady up on there. I almost called her a kid. She's a lady. As we know, the Republican Party is run by Russians at this point in time. So let's say some Russian decides to communicate with a member here in D.C. What FISA does is it's surveilling what the Russian is doing. What? What? What, what, what? That is not how it works. That's not how FISA works, lady. I don't get it. I don't understand how you don't know what it is that you voted on, but that's not how FISA works. FISA works on both sides. If a Russian is communicating with a member of Congress, FISA shows you both sides of the conversation. Why? Because they're both, you're, you're covering one target, but think about your email box. Does it just cover the things that you send and it doesn't have the response? No. Think about a phone call. It takes two to tango. You pick up the line, you get somebody else on the phone, you get both sides of the conversation. It's not like we're hearing like something into the void where we just hear Russians and nothing else. No, you get both sides. And here's the dumb thing. FISA is a warrant. 702 requires no warrant. They keep trying to conflate these because they know the American people have a very limited time span and a very limited attention span. And they're probably only going to read the headlines. How about this headline? This one's good. This is from the ACLU. Obama will soon turn over the keys to the surveillance state to President-elect Trump. This is coming from November of 2016. This is what we would call evidence. This is evidence not of what the ACLU thinks it is. The ACLU thinks this is the danger at the time they're writing. This is a senior staff writer for their national security project and their deputy director for their national security project. They're writing this because they think it's very scary that they are about to give unprecedented powers to Donald Trump, the president-elect, in November of 2016. I would suggest to you that this is evidence, evidence that Donald Trump never held the keys to the surveillance state. They worked for, the, for themselves. They worked for people that didn't have to answer to anyone. Why is that? Because these people are unelected bureaucrats and they survive past all administrations. On January 20th, President Obama will hand Donald Trump the keys to the surveillance state. Not only will Trump have the NSA's incredible, powerful technological tools at his disposal, but he'll also have the benefit of the broad and unconstitutional surveillance authorities embraced by the Obama administration. Administ uh, authorities that give tremendous discretion to executive branch officials. 
These spying powers have long been cause for concern because they violate our core rights to privacy, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. But when wielded by a man who invited Russia to hack his political opponents, who reportedly eavesdropped on his own hotel guests, yeah, these are all unsubstantiated, and who called for expanded surveillance of Americans, especially Muslim Americans, they are all the more frightening. What happened was, is that President Obama expanded Executive Order 12333, which is the primary authority under which the NSA conducts surveillance. And it encompasses a dizzying array of warrantless, high-tech spying programs. Now, here's the thing that's crazy. Why would Obama, who was hoping to see Hillary Clinton succeed, why would Obama give all of these powerful tools to Donald Trump on the way out the door? Unless as my friend George Hill has, has properly stated, Donald Trump was never going to be the one in charge of it. They have plenty of people that are within these agencies that are answering to the God of government, not to any particular administration. They last longer. They, they are there before and they are there after, and they do not necessarily care what's happening during there are plenty of violations of federal law that happen that are completely overlooked because they are just not going to be enforced. Hatch Act violations, which are political statements on duty. You'll remember under Donald Trump, under Bill Barr, the Neil Team Sixers, the folks that took a knee for BLM that were in my former agency, they got away scot-free. They were given gift cards to Applebee's for making a political statement while wearing FBI uniforms for whatever that is. That's not really, we're not uniform, but... They were wearing the, the placards and body armor, right? And smiling. Mm. Mostly women, for whatever that's worth. And feminine men. These people don't seem to understand what FISA is. That makes sense to me that they wouldn't understand it. But it doesn't really make sense when somebody who used to be a Navy SEAL who should understand what warfare looks like is going to make these utterly disingenuous arguments. I'm going to play some of what Dan Crenshaw had to say. Also known as Patch McCain. Um, this is what Republicans are even arguing. They hate you. I mean, they hate us. And they're not going to tell you things that are honest. Let's break this thing down. I'm not going to play all of it, but I'm going to give you enough of it that we can just dissect that this is full of lies. Again, FISA, true FISA, is a warrant. It is argued in front of a judge in the same way that any other warrant is. You make a statement. It is an ex parte hearing that takes place in front of the FISC, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. A panel of judges evaluate whether or not you have the justification to enter into a true FISA. 702 is not that. It is decided by some FBI level official who basically says, yes, you've met the burden. This person is associated with the things that we say that 702 FISA can cover. Generally speaking, it's supposed to be a foreign official on foreign soil. But the problem with that is, is that all the incidental collection is in order to be able to see who the foreign people are on the foreign soil, we've got to actually be able to get all of that stuff. We're sweeping everything up to the NSA. Then we're prioritizing the stuff that are the particular what we call uh, facilities. That's going to be the email or the phone or whatever. Skype handle. Take your pick. And then we're going to go after those and read them. And as I said, it's not just who the Russians talking to. It's not just who the Chinese person's talking to. It's the person on the other end. And it's not just limited to foreign officials. It's also limited to things that we call co-optees, which are business people. Business people who are associated with foreign powers are also susceptible to 702 FISA. Dan Crenshaw is absolutely full of shit. I'll just say it plainly. Here we go. I want to let my fellow Americans uh, know something that, that might shock them. We all know that fentanyl is a scourge on our country. We all know that fentanyl is produced by the Mexican drug cartels. We all know that the precursor chemicals for fentanyl come from Chinese companies. What you might not know is that we can't even get a FISA warrant to stop that, to collect intelligence on those production companies, on those attorneys, on those bankers, on those facilitators that help the cartels murder and poison tens of thousands of Americans every single year. That's a pretty shocking statement. I bet you didn't know that. Well, you should know that. You know, FISA, just despite all of the, the uh, misinformation put out about it, is actually very narrowly tailored. It only allows you to get a warrant on a foreigner in a foreign land if it's related to foreign intelligence, if it's related to counter weapons of mass destruction, or if it's related to counterterrorism. Nowhere in there is counter narcotics, the thing that's actually killing Americans today and every single day. 
So how on earth can we have people like Chris Ray talk about how it is the number one tool they're using against fentanyl? Oh, we need it because we need to be able to go after the fentanyl producers. Yeah, they're already using it for ways that they're not allowed to, which is to say criminal investigations. They're just using it under the guise of being about foreigners. Everything that man just said was false. It's broad. Counterterrorism equals all kinds of things, many of which are not crimes, most of which are not crimes. Counterintelligence, same story. They can go under things called counterproliferation, which is moving of technology, and you can get all kinds of cases opened up. They've actually told you that they are using it to stop fentanyl traffic coming across the border. They've had those tools. It's not currently working. So why should we reaffirm it if we have fentanyl coming over like it doesn't matter? The, th the problem is enforcement. The problem is the executive agencies that are busy having drag queens and telling people don't. Maybe that's the problem is that you're not projecting strength. And instead, you have this lie when the left and the right are both lying to you, you know that that's where the problem is. Also, is it just me or does Dan Crenshaw start sounding more and more like Norm Macdonald every single day? Do you guys want to hear that one more time? Because it's really weird. Listen, you, once you hear it, you can never unhear it. He sounds like Norm Macdonald. I want to let my fellow Americans uh, know something that, that might shock them. We all, we all know. I want to tell you something that might shock you. Uh, you know, just, anyway, uh, that's, that's all really weird. So does anyone get this? Yes, actually a few people get it. It turns out it's very important. Here it is. Representative Anna Polina Luna says we have one more chance. That's today, by the way. I've retweeted this. You guys can find it on social media. It's on Twitter. We need to have them vote to table this thing. She verges all members of Congress to vote no on the motion to table, the motion to reconsider. I don't understand how they write these stupid things. Does that sound like, like, imagine having a discussion with serious people and saying, listen, I need you to vote no on the motion to table that motion to reconsider. And that's the thing that would, that would work. She sounds like she's got the right ideas. She's continued to say that we need to get this thing reformed. They're calling on all of the 56 members of Congress who voted for the passage of H.R. 7888. If you guys want to call your member of Congress, 7888 is the House resolution that is uh, the Reforming Intelligence and Securing America. They need to put a warrant requirement in to get your information. They need to. That's what the Fourth Amendment says. We don't just say that they can run through the Fourth Amendment. The ACLU and Kyle Serafin are on the same page about this because it's about civil liberties, not because it's about a political position. This is the letter that she sent. They're talking about the Biggs Amendment, which was uh, which was voted 212 and 212. And you know who this, the deciding vote was? The tiebreaker was Mike Johnson, who said, eh, Constitution's not worth it. It's just not worth it. The only person who really seems to get all of this is uh, Senator Rand Paul. He's always been consistent about it. You got to love this. Like I said, if you want to call your, your member of Congress and tell them how to vote and, and start raising the chatter, it's uh, House Resolution 7888. Make that happen if, you are so, if you're so inclined. Here's uh, Rand Paul talking about the only thing that makes sense to me. I want to also ask you about what you heard from uh, the speaker regarding FISA. Uh, can we trust government? Can we trust government to use FISA appropriately and legally? Absolutely not. Americans shouldn't be spied on by their own government. The Fourth Amendment was put in by our founding fathers to protect us. FISA doesn't obey the Fourth Amendment. And so Speaker Johnson was incredibly wrong. He broke the tie. He voted with the Democrats. Here we have the leader of the Republicans in the House votes with the Democrats against a warrant requirement. We also have Speaker Johnson voting for the spending package, once again, with the majority of the Democrats. As I see it now, I'm not sure, sure there's a difference between Mike Johnson being in charge and the Democrats being in charge. The debt, the deficit this year will be $1.5 to $2 trillion, and that's Mike Johnson's bill. He put it forward. He supported it with a minority of Republicans, with a majority of Democrats. This is not using the power of the purse. This is abdicating the power of the purse. Can we just agree, America only? and no one for speaker if we're going to have that guy. There was a statement that someone made who said, uh, who needs Democrats when you've got Republicans? I tend to agree with that right now. These people are intentionally losing. They're spiking the ball and running out the clock on something when we didn't win. We're behind. What are we conserving, folks? It's a real simple question. I'm actually going to show you what we're conserving. I'll show you it very, very visually in just one second. Anyway, I 100% endorse what uh, what Rand Paul said. He always tends to be sort of the the voice of sanity in the in the otherwise stupid. Maybe that's because he's smarter than them. <laughs> that's why guys like Tom Massey are the only ones that seem to make sense too. All right, um, let me suggest to you guys that if you are not getting a high quality snack like something at 
Matt Hat Jerky, then you are screwing it up. Matt with two T's, Hat with one T's, Matt Hat Jerky.com slash Kyle. The promo code Kyle will save you 20%. That's worth doing it. Okay, I'm working my way through the original recipe styles. These are all the gourmet flank ones. These are the USDA Prime. It's tender meat. Um, the mild is too mild for me. The original is perfect. It's really good. I'm going to try the spicy. I'm working my way through it. I told, I, I said that um, that these campaigns are all about contrast. It is for me with jerky as well. Guys, use matthatjerky.com slash Kyle. Use the promo code Kyle and check it out. Make your own decision. You decide how much spice you want. It's really good stuff and it's healthy. It's high protein. This is going to keep you from eating junk snacks. And if you've just had too much of, you know, eating nuts or something like that, you can't do that. Check out Matt at Jerky. Okay. And then also you guys can support us by going to mypillow.com slash Kyle. The promo code Kyle can save you up to 50%. That's five zero percent You'll get the same deals that any other person on social media giving you a code does, but it just uh, supports our program and we're much smaller than them. They don't need your support. We do. So check out my, uh, mypillow.com slash Kyle. You guys are wondering, I'm like, I'm looking all over the place. It's because my uh, my teleprompter that lets me see myself and see what's coming up on the screen, it failed, just inexplicably failed. It's been working for God knows how long. So I'll have to do some troubleshooting later. But anyway, check out mypillow.com slash Kyle. Promo code Kyle at checkout saves you up to 50% worth your time if you guys are in the market for bedding or towels or slippers or robes or all those kind of things. And Mike Lindell certainly does appreciate your support as well. All right. I told you I'm going to show you what we're conserving. For me, it's very, very simple. I saw this video. This looks like not just something my daughter would do. This actually looks like my daughter. For a second, I was like, what? Watch this video. I'm going to describe it because there's no, there's no sound on it. Okay. There's no audio, so I will describe it for you. How about this? We're looking through a screen door. There's a little girl who's wearing a red blanket. Her little toesies are stuck out. She looks like she's probably between the ages of six and nine years old. Little blonde thing wearing a face mask. And the face mask has holes in it with flowers. She's rigged up a way for hummingbirds to come and alight on her face while she's wearing a mask so she can meet hummingbirds person to person. Right? That's what we're conserving. We're trying to conserve the fact that it actually matters how our kids grow up. And it matters that they that these politicians don't fritter away the one thing, the one thing that we are supposed to be protecting and conserving in this country. And that are women who give birth to little babies. And those little babies are supposed to have a future that's better than our own. Isn't that it? Isn't that what it's all about? Like, what on earth are these people giving away? It's not theirs to give away. That's why I'm so pissed about these people. And uh, it led me to a high point. I know we're going into the week. I don't want to leave you guys disappointed and frustrated about trannies and losers that are out there and don't and weak foreign policy. So this is a video that is entitled Reject Modernity, Embrace Masculinity. And I will also say it also reminds us to embrace violence. The capacity for violence is important. It is inherently masculine to embrace the capacity for violence to prepare yourself so that you are capable of violence, if nothing else, so that you don't have to use violence. This is obviously not a licensed song. We are doing this under fair use because it is commentary here. And the commentary is prepare yourself for war so that you don't have to go to war. Otherwise, you're going to go weakly into a war that you didn't choose. All right, reject modernity. Here's a little compilation to get you guys pumped up as we get started with this Monday. Hey, I just wanted to come on here really quickly with a message for all of my muscular men out there. People love it, it's great, I care about you, but nobody cares about when you do that and there's like muscles there, nobody cares about that. I'm a pregnant trans man. Basically my entire life is nothing. I think it's for boys is a great book. Um, Basically, I'm raising money to help fund my son's transition-related costs. You so it's okay to be weak. Men are not meant to be dominant. Men are meant to be submissive. Men are trash. <laughs> Fed Square, Melbourne CBD, and we're going to be asking, what is a man? Ooh, I'm going to fucking spell it out for you.
am I the only one that like looks at American flags and I'm just like, ugh. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. It's shipping up to Boston if you guys want to get pumped up before you go lift heavy things and move them around for no reason other than to prepare yourself to lift heavy things when you need to. Don't let the first time you try to go lift a car or deadlift anything off somebody be the time when they actually need it and they are waiting for you to step up and be a real man. And women, encourage men. That's your job. Encourage men to be capable of violence. Reminds me of this funny little conversation my wife had with uh, one of her lib friends because she was in the counseling field. There's a lot of weakness in the counseling field. There's a lot of softness. We need that. Don't get me wrong. There's a balance. But when they said, oh my God, did you know that he owned so many guns Like when you, when you like married him? Mm. She was like, yeah, that's why I married him. I just did a count in my garage. Like we're, we're north of 25,000 rounds of ammunition. Why? Because I don't want to have to use them. That's why. You guys should be in the same boat. Prepare yourself because we are dealing with tactical failures that are setting us up because of strategic weakness that our administration is involved in. All right, shipping out to Boston, Dropkick Murphys. If you guys ever want to get pumped, that's a solid one. And that was a cool techno remix. I hadn't heard that one before. Prepare to do hard things for its own sake because you never know when you may have to do so. Um, another hard thing you guys can do, you can support my buddy who's doing something difficult. He's going toe to toe with the FBI. This is our merch shop but it is really a support, a vote in support of the O'Boyle family as they stand in stark contrast to the evil that our government's doing to whistleblowers, the-suspendables.com. Still the easiest thing to do is to pick up a couple of these. If you guys wanna buy our uh, pins, the merch pin, you can do that. They're three for 30 bucks. They're inexpensive, they, are, they ship fast, and you can hand them out to people to remind them to do the right thing when given the opportunity. You can put them on your hat, you can put them on your jacket, you can put them on your dress if you're a lady and you wanna do that. Yeah, or are you gonna put holes in things? Yeah, we're actually working on a magnetic version of that as well. But if you guys want to check it out, do the-suspendables.com. That's the website. Promo code Kyle is the way that you save 10%. That just lets them know that it came from the Kyle Serafin show. That's all we're doing here. We're just trying to support masculinity and men who want to take care of their families in the right way. Thanks, Rose, in the chat for putting that out there. Again, the-suspendables.com, promo code K-Y-L-E. Ah, yeah, shipping out to Boston. That, that, that's got me pumped. I may pay that play that again before we roll out the door. Um, Five-star review is actually coming this time from our friends over on Spotify. If you are listening on any of the audio channels, you guys can respond. There is a prompt for questions, comments, sarcastic remarks. Give us anyone you want. This is from BFDBK just a little while ago. Man, Kyle, you're so right on the shutdown and lying about 12 bills. We're so sick of these people. I am too. That's why I started with no one for speaker and why I also am telling you America only needs to be our chant. Forget America first. That means that there's some others out there that we're interested in. I think if you're not interested in America, I'm not interested in you. Let's crush these people. Go out there and be hard today, folks. That's the only way to do it. Uh, thanks for joining us for the Kyle Serafin Show. We'll see you again tomorrow. And if you guys stick around on this channel, if you are uh, like sharing and subscribing it, you will get notifications. You can click on the notifications and set them up. So you get an email from us when we go live. We're probably gonna go live if things get spicy in New York City with Mark Naughton. You can follow him on Twitter at Mark Naughton 9. Make sure that you are supporting all of our sponsors when you guys have the choice and you have a chance. You can do that by going to any of the websites, including Catholic Vote, forpatriots.com slash Kyle. PatriotCoolers.com with the promo code Kyle, MattHatJerky.com promo code Kyle, and MyPillow.com slash Kyle. So those are all of our, our friends that are keeping us going. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. God bless you. Stay safe. And uh, we'll see you in the morning. Thanks for listening to the Kyle Serafin Show, streamed live weekdays on Rumble.com slash Kyle Serafin. Follow Kyle on Twitter, Truth Social, and Instagram at Kyle Serafin. Hey, I just wanted to come on here really quickly with a message for all of my muscular men out there. People love it, it's great, I care about you, but nobody cares about when you do that and there's like muscles there, nobody cares about that. I'm a pregnant trans man. Basically my entire life is nothing. Pink is for Boys is a great book. Um, basically, 
I'm raising money to help fund my son's transition related costs. You so it's okay to be weak. Men are not meant to be dominant. Men are meant to be submissive. Men are trash. <laughs> Fed Square, Melbourne CBD, and we're gonna be asking, what is a man? Well, I'm gonna fucking spell it out for you. Am I the only one that like looks at American flags and I'm just like, ugh. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing.